Big Bang is in a certain sense not singular at all. Well, it's not singular if you use a kind of geometry which is called conformal geometry. The universe expands and it expands and this exponential expansion we seem to see, the stars seem to be going, starting to go away from us. Renowned physicist Roger Penrose introduces a groundbreaking theory challenging traditional views of the universe's origin. Penrose proposes a conceptual shift by characterizing the early universe, especially gravity, through conformal geometry. In today's episode, we will challenge Roger Penrose's theory on the existence of the universe. This is Reveal the Mystery. If you like watching content like this, consider subscribing. Penrose's theory combines mathematical innovation with physical insight, addressing paradoxes in the microwave background and suggesting a novel understanding of the universe's early moments. According to Penrose, there's an intriguing aspect to the microwave background that presents a paradox. It indicates the occurrence of an event akin to the Big Bang, yet when scrutinizing the microwave background through observations of frequency and intensity plotted on the Planck curve black body spectrum, a remarkable alignment with extraordinary precision emerges. This alignment suggests that the early universe existed in a state known as thermal equilibrium, the maximum random state as dictated by the second law of thermodynamics. The curious part is that the early universe in its thermal equilibrium appears to be very special, particularly in the realm of gravity. Unlike other components, gravity seemingly remained distinct and not thermalized with the rest. This uniqueness challenges our understanding of the Big Bang, posing a puzzle that current theories, including the inflationary model, struggle to address adequately. Traditionally, discussions about events before the Big Bang were dismissed as meaningless due to the singularity of that state. However, a shift in perspective is now considered, suggesting that the initial state of the universe, especially regarding gravity, might be characterizable in a geometrical manner. This involves extending our mathematical descriptions before the Big Bang, allowing for the universe to be stretched or squashed in a conformal manner akin to Escher's depiction of angels and devils within a circular boundary. In this new conceptualization, the Big Bang is envisioned as a surface that can be extended beyond its apparent limits, utilizing a mathematical framework known as conformal geometry. This approach allows for a more nuanced exploration of the universe's early stages, presenting a novel perspective that challenges traditional notions and opens up the possibility of understanding the events preceding the Big Bang. This serves as a way to characterize the initial state of the universe. It appears that the gravitational degrees of freedom are somehow suppressed, as depicted in this representation. It's a bit technical, but I hope the idea is getting across. On one side of this perspective, consider the physical rationale. In the early universe, temperatures were so high that particle masses became inconsequential. Mass essential for building clocks, lost significance. So in this scheme, the universe struggled to keep track of time, paving the way to conceptualize events before the Big Bang. On the other side, envision a very distant future, with the universe continually expanding and accelerating, driven by the mysterious force known as dark energy, a scenario unfolds where black holes evaporate into radiation. Despite some conjectural aspects, it's envisioned that eventually all matter in the universe dissipates, leaving only dispersed radiation. Now consider the very remote future from your viewpoint. Picture a universe devoid of mass, where even black holes have evaporated away. It might sound boring, waiting for black holes to disappear, but in this scenario, only photons remain. Since photons don't experience the passage of time, eternity holds no significance for them. This concept arises from a mathematical trick, challenging the conventional way of discussing infinity in the context of relativity. In this distant future, the universe forgets its size and becomes akin to a small new universe, employing another mathematical trick called conformal squashing. It loses track of spatial and temporal distances, and in a sense, it becomes the next Big Bang. 
This idea might seem crazy, but it's a result of contemplating the potential monotony of a universe that loses all mass. To fill out this concept, honest mathematics and connections to observations are required. Surprisingly, it's not as hopeless as it seems. The notion aligns with some aspects of inflationary theory, and certain scale invariants in observations could support this model. Additionally, disturbances caused by black holes before their final disappearance might leave traces in the remote future, providing potential observational evidence for this intriguing perspective. As you explore galaxies and clusters, you'll find that their black holes engage in fascinating interactions. They spiral around each other, eventually swallowing one another in a cosmic dance. Throughout this process, they emit gravitational waves, which are like ripples in space-time, a gravitational counterpart to light. These ripples, although infinitely dispersed, leave an imprint on infinity. While it might be challenging to grasp, when you compress the information, these ripples persist and influence the subsequent stages of the universe. Let's consider an analogy for better understanding. Think of a pond. When raindrops hit the pond, ripples spread out. This is similar to black holes colliding and emitting gravitational waves. Even after the rain stops, the ripples remain, creating a messy yet discernible pattern. In principle, through delicate analysis, you should be able to identify these ripples as individual events, much like raindrops hitting the pond. This concept, though requiring careful scrutiny, holds the potential for future exploration. Reflecting on the broader context of the universe's origins, it's fascinating to consider what happened before the Big Bang. While some might find it outrageous, it's not entirely implausible. The microwave background, a relic of the early universe, reveals a thermal equilibrium and a unique interplay between gravity and matter. Traditional theories, including inflation, struggle to explain this initial specialness. However, a shift in perspective, characterized by mathematical concepts like the vile curvature hypothesis, suggests a plausible alternative. In this mathematical framework proposed by your colleague Paul Todd, the universe can be extended before the Big Bang. While this may sound abstract, it's a mathematical statement, not a commitment to a specific physics interpretation. Imagine the universe as depicted in Escher's artwork, a realm of angels and devils within a circular boundary. By stretching or squashing this boundary in a conformal manner, you open up the possibility of exploring events preceding the Big Bang, presenting a novel perspective on the universe's mysterious beginnings. The ones at the edge have the same shapes as the ones in the middle. Imagine if you're willing to stretch and squash them uniformly, you could extend that boundary to infinity or compress it back to a finite boundary. This concept, known as conformal geometry, deals with shapes without concern for sizes. So if you're comfortable with stretching or squashing, you can mentally step outside this universe to another side. Now, think about the Big Bang, picturing it as somehow stretched out to be a surface. This isn't a definitive surface you could go before it. Understand that this is a mathematical trick. It's not claiming to represent reality. If you phrase the conditions on your universe in this way, stating that you could extend before the Big Bang, it becomes a method of characterizing the initial state of the universe. It appears that the gravitational degrees of freedom are suppressed as indicated in this representation. On one side of the picture, the physical rationale for this lies in the extremely high temperature of the early universe. The energies of particles were so high that their masses became inconsequential. Mass, crucial for building a clock, didn't matter in this scenario. In the early universe, where temperatures were exceptionally high, the universe struggled to keep track of time. The fundamental equations in physics, the Planck law and Einstein's equation, EAMC2, tie energy to frequency and mass, suggesting that mass and frequency are essentially the same thing. In the absence of mass, or when mass becomes irrelevant, you can't construct a clock. Taking this seriously, in the early universe, the concept of timekeeping breaks down. 
It's a challenging idea to grasp, but mathematically it holds sense, even if it might be hard to consider it as real physics.